Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. We're gonna be looking at how to find these little mini chord shapes uh, that guitarists use. And it doesn't matter what style of music that you play, doesn't matter what scale or chords or whatever, it's the same concept. All right, so I will be using A7, a bluesy, funky kind of thing. Um, and we need to know the Mixolydian scale. We also use the blues scale. Um, for the blues or for the seventh chords. Um, so what we want to do is if you can download a diagram of the, the scale you're on, the idea, if you look for the notes one, three, five, and seven, in our case, those four notes, they're kind of like your golden notes. So what you can do, if you're wanting to use just those notes to really sort of make the chord solid, the sound and the harmony solid, you can just sort of stick to those notes. And what you can do is come up with little ideas based around that. So for instance, if I'm using um, major third, fifth, and the root note, there's that idea. And then you can use that funky blues thing, which we do going from the minor third to the major third. There's a little idea. If I want, I can then think, I can look at my little neck diagram and I can think, all right, well, okay, I'm gonna use the major third. Maybe I'll use the seven and the one. That's kind of got that bluesy, bluesy vibe. Maybe I wanna mix it around, play different strings. So maybe I'll go root note here. It's not super exciting, but whatever. There's my seventh again. So I've got one major three and a seventh, minor seven in there. I can look around all of the different combinations I can find with one, three, five, seven in that area. Then the idea is it's just the same concept all over the neck. So you can either make another diagram and just have the whole neck covered in those four notes. And that will give you uh, great ideas for also soloing because they're the tasty notes that, um, not necessarily tasty, but they're the, the notes you can rely on to sound pretty good when you're soloing if you get lost and you're, oh, I know where my root note is or my thirds. Um, so that's, that's one way of looking at it. Take the scale, find the one, three, five, seven of that chord that you're playing on uh, within the scale shape and just muck around, search and find out what you like the sound of. The next step is kind of doing the same thing, but just with the whole scale and seeing how it works. So for instance, if I'm playing A7, maybe I don't want to just use one, three, five, seven. So I might look at the scale and then just, it's kind of like you're just looking at the scale on the picture and you're just like going, oh, what about this note, that note, that note, and this note, three or four note chords or two note chords. So for instance, I do a lot of two note stuff. Maybe I'll do the, So I'm keeping the root note, and then I'm just kind of going down the scale. So maybe um, that kind of thing. So there, I was I did a little single note, double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop. Then it was a three note thing. That's it, so I'm looking at the scale. It's like uh, looking at this and I've got my little roadmap of dots which are available in that, uh, in that key, in that scale. Be careful though, because if you're not playing over the top of something that's you know, a root note at least, or even better, have the chord you're playing on, you know, playing in the background on a YouTube play along or do a loop yourself or whatever, because that is what's making the harmony work. The things you do on top of it, need to be attached to the chord you're playing on, otherwise you won't know how it sounds. So that's super important. So that's kind of sticking in this one area, and like I said with the other exercise, you look at the whole neck, download a mixolydian across the entire neck, and you'll find, oh, okay, there's just lots of shapes. Try not to think of your standard chord shapes, just make them up, look and search. There's typical stuff like that, or, that kind of move going from, in this case, we're going from the, the six to the minor seven, minor third to the major third. We use that all the time in bluesy, funky stuff. So there's that idea which you can then find all over the neck. What about if I pick another shape? So I'm gonna pick this guy. 
theory wise, I'm looking at the minus seven, the nine and the five. Each one of them can move up or down the scale. Each string, you have to think of, set each note separately, sorry. So that guy has to move up to here. This one has to move up to there. This one has to move up to there. It's the same shape. So you can stuff around on those two. You keep moving up and then this guy has to, have to change shape. So maybe you might be better off if you're gonna move up again, the fingering is like this. So maybe you wanna be careful of how you finger these chords because if you try and move up to the next one, you can't slide into it because your fingers are not gonna get to the right notes. So maybe you play like this. So when you slide up, you can get to that next shape. So if I'm doing a... Uh, Whatever, do whatever you want with it. I'm teaching you the idea, you take it and do what you want. Um, so that's it, it's kind of take a three note idea, whether, uh, you know, move it up and down this, up the, 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 move each note up and down the string to the next note in the scale. So this is a lot easier if you have the, the scale in front of you and you can just go, oh, that goes to there, that goes to there. And you'll find little cool ideas that, that will work and, you know, you can have fun with it. What about another idea? Mm hmm. Another way to look at it. If you, for instance, uh, we're, we're in A7. A7 comes from the key of D major. Um, what we want to do is think about the chords within the key. So if we're thinking D major, oh, well, let's stick, um, all right, D major seven or D major. So this bar here, or these notes, if I'm just thinking D major, if I play A in the root note, just to get the sound of that relationship, that's all right. I want to make sure that I come back to my home chord or my the bass sound. If I stay outside, not outside music-wise, but if I stay away from the, the root harmony, it might create a bit too much tension. So just be careful. This is up to you once again, but that shape, if I look at it again, I've used the D major, or whatever, anywhere I can play a D major triad, I can use that shape in the, in the riff, in the, the idea. Um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, yeah, sorry, brain fart. Uh, if I go, let's say D major seven, which gives us that shape we used before. You see? Can you see what's going on? Uh, so if I then think, what's the next chord within the key of D major? It is E minor. So now if I just think of these three, same three strings, and I'm thinking like, all right, well. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. I'm just using the A open string just so you can hear what the hell's going on with the harmony. So I'm thinking, I'm not thinking this, but this is how you figure this stuff out. E minor, D major, A7, maybe E minor 7, D major 7, and then, I don't know, whatever, A7 something, A13. Uh, what's the next chord within the key? F sharp minor. So now I've got more movement and I can just use the little shape from the F sharp. E minor, D major. Okay, so if I set up my little groove. I don't know, whatever. I'm not feeling super inspired right now, but that's the idea. Hopefully it makes sense. Download the, the neck diagram, draw it on yourself, or download A Mixolydian or A minus, A Dorian, A, who cares, whatever you're playing, and look at it. If you don't know any of the theory, you don't know your um, scale notes all over the neck or whatever, 
Google the neck diagram and just use that. Eventually you'll start making these connections and if you wanna learn the theory and all that stuff, you can. All right, so I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to keep these videos short if I do them because I'm pretty slack with YouTube. Um, so yeah, if you've got questions about it, let me know and I'll try and respond as quick as possible. Uh, the idea is just to expand your chord knowledge and stay away from just the standard chord shapes. And the more exploring you do, the more cool stuff you'll find and maybe even find your own voice instead of just copying other guitarists, which is also a good way to learn anyway. But yeah, find your own voice and start exploring and having fun with it. All right, take it easy. Cheers. Mm -hmm.